Ancient DNA from Chalcolithic Israel reveals the role of population mixture in cultural transformation. The unique material culture of the late Chalcolithic period in the southern Levant, 4500-3900-3800 BCE, stands out from other historical periods. To investigate whether population movements influenced the rise and fall of this culture, we analyzed genome-wide ancient DNA from 22 individuals from Pekian Cave, Israel. These individuals belong to a homogeneous population with ancestry approximately 57% from local Levant Neolithic groups, 17% from Iran Chalcolithic groups, and 26% from Anatolian Neolithic groups. The Pekian population also shows different contributions to later Bronze Age groups, indicating that at least one of these groups did not descend from the Pekian cave population. This study illustrates how population movements drove cultural changes in ancient times. The material culture of the late Chalcolithic period in the southern Levant is quite different from earlier and later periods. This period is notable for more densely populated settlements, the introduction of sanctuaries, the use of ossuaries for secondary burials, and the expansion of public rituals. There was also a significant artistic flourish with symbolic motifs on pottery, basalt, copper, and ivory artifacts. Noteworthy is the use of the lost wax technique for casting copper, indicating exceptional technical skill. The late Chalcolithic period, often associated with the Gasulian culture, though not typically applied to the Galilee region, shows few stylistic links to earlier or later cultures, sparking debates about its origins. One theory suggests the culture spread from northern Mesopotamia due to similarities in art, while another proposes that local populations developed it, with any similarities being due to idea exchanges rather than migrations. To investigate these origins, ancient DNA was studied from a Chalcolithic site in Pekiin, northern Israel. This cave, discovered in 1995, was sealed naturally around 3900 BCE. Excavations revealed numerous finely crafted objects and over 200 decorated ossuaries, suggesting it was a large burial site for up to 600 individuals. Radiocarbon dating indicates the cave was a central burial location used throughout the late Chalcolithic period, 4500-3900 BCE. Previous genome-wide ancient DNA studies from the Near East have revealed that at the time when agriculture developed, populations from Anatolia, Iran, and the Levant were approximately as genetically differentiated from each other as present-day Europeans and East Asians are today. By the Bronze Age, however, expansion of different Near Eastern agriculturalist populations, Anatolian, Iranian, and Levantine, in all directions and admixture with each other substantially homogenized populations across the region, thereby contributing to the relatively low genetic differentiation that prevails today. Lazaridis et al. showed that the Levant Bronze Age population from the site of Ein Ghazal, Jordan, 2490-2300 BCE, could be fit statistically as a mixture of around 56% ancestry from a group related to Levantine pre-pottery Neolithic agriculturalists, represented by ancient DNA from Moza, Israel and Ein Ghazal, Jordan, 8300-6700 BCE, and 44% related to populations of the Iranian Chalcolithic, Say Gabi, Iran, 4680-3662 BCE. Haber et al. 26 suggested that the Canaanite Levant Bronze Age population from the site of Sidon, Lebanon, 1700 BCE, could be modeled as a mixture of the same two groups, albeit in different proportions, 48% Levant Neolithic-related and 52% Iran Chalcolithic-related. However, the Neolithic and Bronze Age sites analyzed so far in the Levant are separated in time by more than 3,000 years, making the study of samples that fill in this gap, such as those from Pecky Inn, of critical importance. In a dedicated clean room facility at Harvard Medical School, we obtained bone powder from 48 skeletal remains, of which 37 were Petrus bones known for excellent DNA preservation, 
we extracted DNA and built next-generation sequencing libraries to which we attached unique barcodes to minimize the possibility of contamination. We treated the libraries with uracil DNA glycosylase, UDG, to reduce characteristic ancient DNA damage at all but the first and last nucleotides, data one, provide background for successful samples and report information for each library, respectively. After initial screening by enriching the libraries for mitochondrial DNA, we enriched promising libraries for sequences overlapping about 1.2 million single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, 30 by 31. We evaluated each individual for evidence of authentic ancient DNA by limiting to libraries with a minimum of 3% cytosine to thymine errors at the final nucleotides by requiring that the ratio of X to Y chromosome sequences was characteristic of either a male or a female. This study nearly doubles the genome-wide data from ancient Levant populations due to the higher quality of data than previous studies. This increase enhances the ability to analyze changes in frequencies of biologically significant alleles. We examined changes in SNP allele frequencies related to metabolism, pigmentation, disease susceptibility, immunity, and inflammation in the Levant HHL population, comparing them to Levant HN, Levant EBA North, Levant EBA South, Anatolia N, Iran CHL populations, and present-day African, East Asian, and European ancestries from the 1000 Genomes Project. Three key findings emerged. One, eye color. An allele, G, at RS1 29138.32, near the OCA2 gene, associated with blue eye color in Europeans, had a frequency of 49% in Levant HHL, suggesting blue eyes were common. Although this allele did express as brown eyes, one female displayed symptoms of albinism. The mitochondrial haplogroups showed regional diversity, but male lineage was distinct. 2. Skin pigmentation. The SLC24A5 gene allele, A, at RS1426654, a major determinant of light skin pigmentation in West Eurasians, was fixed in Levant JHL, indicating that light skin was likely common. However, conclusions about pigmentation from a single site should be made cautiously. 3. Positive selection. The allele, G, at RS6903823 in the Zexcan3 and ZSCAN31 genes, absent in early agriculturalists, Levant Yen, Anatolia N, Iran N, but noted in Calcolithic and Bronze Age populations, had frequencies of 20%, 17%, and 15% in Levant ECHL, Levant B South, and Iran THL, respectively. This suggests it was increasing in frequency concurrently in the Near East and Europe. The Chalcolithic period in the Levant saw significant changes in craft production, burial practices, settlement patterns, and symbolism. This study's findings suggest that these cultural shifts were linked to population movements and turnover. High-quality ancient DNA from Pekian Cave quality from Pekian Cave samples is exceptionally high for the region, attributed to two factors, targeted sampling from the Petrus portion of the temporal bone and the cave's limestone environment, which protected the remains from DNA-damaging acidic conditions. Genetic homogeneity and admixture. Individuals from Pekian Cave were genetically homogeneous, with most males belonging to the Y-chromosome haplogroup T. This differs from earlier Neolithic, haplogroup E, and later Bronze Age, haplogroup J populations in the region. The Levant HL population is a mix of Levant N, 57%, Anatolia N, 26%, and Iran Tychel, 17%. This contrasts with Levant BA South, which includes Levant N, 58%, and Iran Tychel, 42% ancestry, but lacks Anatolia N influence. These results suggest multiple instances of population movement, including the introduction of Iranian agriculturalist-related ancestry by the Chalcolithic and a distinct spread of Anatolian-related people. Genetic findings align with archaeological evidence from Pekian Cave, which shares characteristics with other Chalcolithic sites. Burial practices, artifacts, and motifs show influences from earlier Neolithic traditions in Anatolia and northern Mesopotamia, 
resources for metallurgical artifacts in the Levant likely originated from the north. Genetic discontinuity between the Chalcolithic and Early Bronze Age periods corresponds with archaeological evidence of dramatic cultural changes, including shifts in settlement patterns, reduced symbolic artifacts, and changed burial practices. This supports the idea of significant cultural upheaval and population turnover at the end of the Chalcolithic era. The study highlights the dynamic nature of population movements in the southern Levant. The Pekian cave population, influenced by external groups, exemplifies how genetic and archaeological data can together illuminate historical societal changes. Outside of this paper, several intriguing connections and observations can be made in the realm of ancient DNA research. Aaron L. Hike's Ancient DNA Origin website notes the Pekian cave samples as being identified as 100% Israelites, adding a layer of cultural and historical significance to the findings from this excavation. The ossuary burial practice, which was prevalent during the Second Temple period and in the time of Christ, provides a direct link between ancient burial customs and significant historical periods, offering insights into the religious and social practices of the time and region of the Holy Land. The diverse range of tea clades, connecting Pekian in the Holy Land to various sites, such as the Erfurt Ashkenazi grave site, the Norwich Chapelfield bodies in the Well Anti-Semitic Massacre, Illustrative DNA, classifying the Abel Beth Maka Iron Age Levant sample as Israelites, is a literal smoking gun. Pekian timeline between the Ain Ghazal Jordan PPNB advanced settlements to the, the Tel Megiddo Bronze Age site hints at complex population movements and interactions across different regions and time periods, shedding light on the interconnectedness of ancient civilizations and genetic lineages in line with the Abrahamic faith and culture.